so next uh, next week I think will be Thursday I will upload the exam two of the lecture exam onto the eCampus so you can go ahead to do the same thing about three weeks you finish it uh, same thing as before um, but most of them multiple choice uh, true or false or some of them are case studies, so you have to look at the video and look at the fact sheets what I put on the e-campus yesterday. And the lab exam, I think will be the end of the October, will be also put onto the e-campus. It will be a combination of a lab meeting exam and what I said is a dilution quiz. Okay, so it's going to be together. Because uh, so you go e-campus to do it, it, it it's easy. And I said one more time, is lab notebook is a, is, a, is a choice. If you want to do, you keep doing it. And show me pretty much the end of the semester. I have a, I have a, a box there. I said, everybody, if you want to show me, just put in the box. Okay, so, so that's what we do. If you think you're doing very good, you don't have to. You don't have to show me your lab notebook. If you choose to do, please do it very well. Okay, so uh, we're going to do the spread plating, pour plating today. But before that, let's go over the results of what we have. Let's go over the last results. So you should all have a slant, a bloss, and the agar plates. So let's talk about that. So first of all, you have a bloss. A bloss, which is looks like. You should see something there at least. Okay? Everybody look at your bloss. You need to see it not clear. If it's very clear, it's wrong. You didn't put anything there. As long as it's not very clear, you're doing good. Because that indication, anything happened, which is indication the bacteria is growing there. So usually there is a three markers for indication bacteria growth. Number one is we call it the pale curse. That is usually which is on the top of the bross, called the pale curse. Number two, the whole tube looks like very crowdy. So we call it turbidity. And number three, you will see some of the bacteria at the bottom. So we call it precipitation. Those are the three markers to indicate bacteria growing there. But be careful, we don't know the bacteria is still survive there or not, but at least we know there are the bacteria there. Okay? Pelicus on the top, usually it is a very strict aerobic bacteria. The bacteria must have oxygen to grow. Turbidity in the middle, it's hard to say. Sometimes we call it a facultative, which means the bacteria can grow uh, both with or without oxygen, but better with oxygen. At the bottom, precipitation, then most of the time, we will see the bacteria is anaerobic, which means they cannot survive in the presence of oxygen. And I mentioned in the lecture, there is no SOD and uh, catalase to hydrolyze the toxication material, generate through the metabolic process. Okay. So those are the three things we say it's a three marker. For bacteria growing. That's all the three markers. This is the broth. Now another thing what we do usually in the lab, it's not really in the clinical lab, in the research lab. Sometimes we will test in the pH of the broth solution. The pH should be lower, lower than 5.0 which means acid production generated. Because during the metabolic process, there's lots of acid generated. Let's say pyruvic acid. Once the acid generated, of course the pH on the low down. So the pH level sometimes can show you the bacteria is, is growing. But again, this is only you know the bacteria is growing there. You can say the bacteria is really survived there. Because even the tubes, you stay in the room temperature for another week, it's gonna be still become turbidity. Okay, so we don't know viable, but we know its bacteria is growing. So that's the first thing for the bros. Second thing, everybody look at your slums. Did you see your slums, what it looks like? 
Did you see a very clear zigzag marker? If you see a very clear zigzag marker, which means you're good. Now, the tricky thing is that when you do, do this uh, uh, zigzag streak for the slants, there is some of the liquid here. You don't have to you should catch it. And when you touch the bacteria, you do the zigzag, it should be very gentle. And do not block in the slants. And then, like I said before, this is for temporary storage. This is usually for temporary storage around uh, maybe 14 days at uh, like 4 degrees Celsius, which is in the refrigerator temperature. You can do a slant, but out longer than that, it will be dying. No more than one month. Okay, this is second one. So the thing, look at your agar plates, what it looks like. If that looks horrible, or you have bacteria growing, how many of you are empty? That is not good. Okay, what you should see, a very clear marker at the beginning, less here, less here, and the very important, you should see those single dots there. Did you see the single dots? How many of you see the single dots? That is a pure culture. Okay. If you see a single dot there, which means you did good. If you only see smear there, there are a couple of reasons. Some of you streaked very well, but you need to be careful. The lid of the, of the agar uh, plates usually have some moisture there. There's some condensation. So when you put it there, you flip it over, the liquid goes there, then the smear, it goes everywhere. And also it's maybe, oh, the storage region for like a week. Because used to be this class, we can do the observation on Thursday instead of one week later. So when you see it right now, maybe it's not very good, but at least some of you should see a very large colony there. That's indicating a pure culture. Okay, so those are the three things that are very basic for bacteria transferring. Uh, what are we gonna see? Okay, so that's all the results. Now I'm gonna uh, skip the results from the uh, from the last week for the gram stain, endospore stain, because I believe lots of you have not been doing observe yet. So you should keep your slides. You do the observation today, I will talk next week. Okay, for the gram results and the endospore results. And I also will put on uh, uh, results uh, in the Word document with some figures to show you how we uh, did, how what is the correct figures for that. Okay, so this is for the bacterial transfer. Uh, today we will do a numeration of bacteria, including two parts, which is uh, uh, spread plating and the pore plating. So we call it numeration bacteria. Numeration bacteria in broth. So we will do a spread plating and the pore plating. This is one, this is two. Okay, I, look, I need to give you a little bit of introduction. You already have your heavy bros, is that right? This is your bros. This bros is, let's say, E. coli, growing 35 degrees Celsius. Let's say 24 for 48 hours. Then your bros actually is more than one week. So we want to see how many bacteria inside, which means what is the concentration. Now, at the end of the day, we, want, we are not going to say how many bacteria totally there? We want to see how many cells per ml in this solution. Now, when, how we determine these cells? We will do a spread plating and a pore plating. You will see a lot of the individual colonies growing on the agar, and this is called colony 
forming unit acronym CFU so at the end of the day we will determine is CFU per ml now here is a question everybody look at your blood it's very crowded very turbidity now how many bacteria are there if you can guess this is around 10 to the 8 cells per ml or we say CFU per ml okay what we're going to do let's say we have an agar we're going to add from here to here let's say we add 0 0.1 ml go there we spread the plate in. you're not going to see those single colony because it's way too much so we say it's at this moment it's too much to count or we say too numerable to count acronym TNTC even you do pore plating which means you add a bacteria there then you add the melted agar you still gonna see the bacteria is everywhere you're not gonna figure out what is the single colony okay because it's growing dramatic then what we need to do we need to do a area dilution so we need to do tenfold or a hundredfold area dilution now how to do this dilution for tenfold area dilution we using 9.0 ml buffered peptone water this is usually is a buffered solution the reason is we want to make sure it's osmotic balance and then we don't use distilled water because some of the bacteria will be burst because it's unbalanced between the saline solution inside and outside of the cell so we use buffered peptone water and then we also dilute it a little bit so we use 0.1 percent therefore we call this is 0.1 percent bpw now how we do a, a hundred for the area dilution we are using 9.9 .9 ml 0.1 percent bpw okay this is the basic thing now how we do it i gave you an example so let's say we have this blood solution this is e coli 35 degrees Celsius, 24 hour. We don't know how many it is. It's become very crowded. So we gotta prepare these dilution tubes. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say we prepare six. Okay. So some of them will be 9.9, .9, some of them will be 9.0. Let's say the first one is 9.9 .9 ml. So what we do is we gonna be this one, you have to mix it very well. So first the raw solution you have to mix well. We usually to do a vortex. Here we do not have a vortex, so what you should do, you should do this shake very well, okay? Like shake this bit maybe 10 times to mix it. Then, you're gonna add 0.1 ml, use pipettes, pipette tips to add it there, the pipette tips which is in front of you bench we have two a hundred microliter and uh, one thousand microliter does everybody knows how to use it you should be fine because you may be taking some chemistry class and the tips should be in front of your bench we had a thin one which is a hundred microliter and the thick one which is one thousand microliter so we have 0.1 is there using 
A hundred microliter tips. We mix it very well. Okay, what is the dilution factor of this tube? 0.1 goes to 9.9. .9. That's diluted a hundred times, is that right? So we write 10 to the second. Okay? Now here, let's say we have a 9.0 ml, 0.1% BPW right here. So when you go from here to here, what we should add? We should add a 1.0 ml transferring from 9.9 .9 goes here. Now every time when you transfer, transfer here, this tube, you have to shake it very well. Once you shake it here, what's the dilution factor right here? This one is 10 to the 3. Okay? Now, we'll, now what are we going to do? We're going to move right here. This we're going to add a 9.0 ml. Let's say, for example, okay, 0.1 BPW. We do another 1.0 ml here. This becomes 10 to the 4. Okay, let's say from right here to this one. This is 9.9 .9 ml, 0.1% PPW. So we add 0.1 from here. And we mix it very well. What is the dilution factor of, of, of the tube? 10 to the fifth. Okay, now let's say we add a 9.0 there. So we add 1.0 ml right here. Then we mix it. What's the dilution factor of this, of this, of this one? 9.6. Okay. Then, let's say, this is a 9.9 .9 ml. We have, goes from here. We add 0.1 ml to here. Then we mix it. What's the dilution factor of this one? 10 to the 7. Okay, so I just want to let you know with the combination of 1.0 and 0.1, we could make 10 to the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th serial dilution using these two. Okay, now I'm going to do the next work. We're going to add the into bacteria onto the, uh, onto the agar. So how we are add it? We're probably not going to do all of them. We'll do some of them. All of them, after serial dilution, we're going to add 0.1 ml onto the agar place. Okay? Now, once you prepare all of these solutions, you're going to use in pipettes to add them on there, onto the place. Always remember, this is a wrong direction. You should always add in from lowest, from the highest to lowest dilution. Do the opposite direction. And you only need one tip. Because even if you carry some of the bacteria from here to here, from here to here, it will not be affected too much. Because 10 to the 7 compared to 10 to the 6, it's a very low amount of carrying. So always you add, once you prepare all the tube, you want to do is from the highest one to lowest dilution. Okay, then what you do? If it is spread plating, you will be using spreader to do the spread. If it's spread plating. Again, from highest to lowest dilution, only one spread so we spread 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 and then spread okay spreader is in front of your bench 
looks like this. You can grab one. How to do this, I already show you in the video. This is a spread. Now, at the same time, we will to do a pull plating. How to do pull plating? Of course, you're going to have this. Then you're going to have empty pictures. Is that right? How to do pull plating? All these plates, you add 0.1 ml from the tube, each corresponding to it. We only gonna do three, we're not gonna do so many, okay? Then, what you do, you're gonna pour melted agar, approximately 20, to 25 ml. This is, you can only guess. Here is the melted agar. It's right here. And this is a water bus. I take it out because it's originally it's too hot. Remember, I mentioned in the lecture, the melted agar is very hot. So when you pour it, we try to don't let it be too hot. The mild heat will kill the bacteria. So, you pull plating the results compared to the spread of plating, usually the number is lower. The reason is that, okay? So I take out two of them, just put in the room temperature, let it be cool down a little bit. Now we're gonna use from there, okay? So this is a procedure. Now, after that, after you plated all of them, for spread of plating, you wait for three to five minutes, then you flip it over. For pour plating, you all up, not upside down, or keep it normal. Because if you upside down, the melted agar will be fall down. We need to let it be solid, solidified. Okay, so don't flip it over. Usually we need to let them be solidified about one hour, then we flip it over. Okay, so that's for the pour plating. Now after you pour these, we will be incubation, 35, degree Celsius for 24 hours, you will see this after one week. Now what you're going to see, you will see there is a colony there growing. Okay, so we're going to manually, manually count it, like you count the apple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you're going to ask me, what is the number is acceptable? The colony number, the fee CFU has to be between 30 to 300. That is acceptable range. If the plate number less than 30, we don't use it because it's maybe the cross contamination. If it's more than 300, we also don't pick it because we think it's too many. You may not count very accurate. So we call it TNTC. If it's more than 300, you have to do is an estimate. Now, what is the final number? If, let's say, we get a 50 CFU colony there, this is the U-plate number. Now you're gonna find the final dilution factor of this place. Now here is the deal. We made all this dilution factor of the tube. Because we are adding 0.1 ml onto the plate, so you should know the final dilution factor of the plate will be 10 times more than the tube, okay? So when you label, this is actually 10 to the eighth. This is 10 to the seven. This is 10 to the six. 10 to the five, 10 to the four, and 10 to the three. For both spread and the plating. The reason we are adding 0 0.1 0 .1 onto the plates. We cannot add 1.0 because it's way too much. It will be floated on the surface. 0.1 ml will be average spread, okay? So let's say this plate, the final dilution factor is 10 to the six. So what is the final population? The concentration is 50 CFU multiplied by 10 to the six. This equals 
50 million. Is that right? 50 million CFU per ml. Okay, this is what we're going to record. We will talk about detail for this dilution scale uh, next Tuesday. Once you finish and you get your results, we'll mention it again. But right now, we just gave you an impression how we do the calibration. So what you should do, get your tubes for 9.9 .9 and 9.0. .9. Okay, 9.0 is right here. 9.9 .9 is right there. You have to be see the difference of the cap. Yellow cap is 9.0, white cap is 9.9 .9 ml, okay? I hope it's accuracy, so it may not look like accuracy, so, but you're assuming that, okay? So when you get these tubes, what you're going to do the first job is label, is that right? Label the tube, label the number, the tube is up to you, because we're not going to collect the tube. But the more important is all these plates. These plates you should label your name, initial, bacterial name, and the final dilution factor. Now, how are we going to do that? This algorithm, I'm going to test you a little bit, so you should look at your factor sheets. This is what you should do for poor plating. This will be your dilution scale, right in the middle. For spread plating, this will be the one at the middle. But to the tube, you can be shared. So let's say the pore plating, you have 10 to the 4th, 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 6th. For spread plating, you could be sharing that. Okay? If you do not know, if you don't know how to share, then you just grab three tubes. For, you just grab the tube following this scale, which means you finish the dilution of the power plating, then you finish the dilution of the spread plating. Okay? It's up to you. I, we have enough tubes for you. If you're confident, let's say you're very good at chemistry uh, for serial dilution, you could be following the, this to do which is a combination because both of them have 10 to the fifth. You can use the same tube. If you're unconfident, get, get the tubes right here for pore plating. Get another set of tube for spread plating. You go ahead to do. Is, 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 that, is that okay? Then two sets, you're not gonna be, com, com, you're, you're not gonna be com, com, confused. Oh. And the pore plating, TA will be a ratio will help you to pour it. Because I don't want you to make a big mess. Spread the plate you do by yourself. Okay? So what you should do, get